What's up guys, this is Nick from stridewise.com and today I'm reviewing the equestrian inspired fashion boot from 224 Ariat, the Fairfax boot. Ariat was founded in 1993 by Beth Cross and Pam Parker. They're really well known for their cowboy boots. So if you are down south working on oil fields or any other sort of blue collar job, there's a pretty good chance that you and or someone you know does so wearing some trusty hard wearing Ariat boots. The name Ariat, by the way, is named after Secretariat. That is the horse that had the enduring world record time at the Belmont Stakes in 1973 of two minutes and 24 seconds capturing the triple crown at the 1973 Belmont Stakes. They give you a little card here to remind you of that. Meanwhile, 224 is sort of like the sister brand of Ariat. So 224 is intended to provide more like modern and uh, sleek sort of looks that are still reminiscent of the whole equestrian horse riding cowboy boot sort of heritage of the brand, but updating it and imbuing that into more modern sleek footwear like this boot here. So the brand has a lot of other ones. They've got uh, the uh, Jefferson boot, they've got the Jack sneaker, but the Fairfax here, this is the one they sent me and this is the sort of Gucci welted boot that I feel and they felt would be the most appropriate for my sort of audience that likes more modern sleek kind of men's boots. So let's take a closer look at it. All right, so these six inch boots do not look like cowboy boots true to 224's mission. These are the sorts of boots you can get away with wearing in New York City or other more urban, more sophisticated sorts of environments. It's got a nice, uh, pretty sleek silhouette around here. It doesn't have a big bulbous toe like you see on a lot of work boots out there. But it's still a pretty serious boot. Even the brown boots they have, because this comes in both brown and black, they're pretty serious. For starters, like the construction is really, really solid. Like it's not these sort of, uh, maybe sort of bleak stitch sort of boots that might be more closely associated with more urban wear. This is a really solid uh, 360 degree, I think this is a storm welt, which is like an extra water resistant type of Goodyear welt. There are a lot of different layers in the sole as well. And it's a leather Goodyear welt as well. So it has really solid sort of construction to it. Although it is fully leather lined. Uh, I know this is kind of a basic thing to say, but whenever a boot is leather lined, I get really happy because it's a lot nicer, more sort of plush feeling on the foot. But in addition to the pretty serious construction, the rest of the boot is a pretty serious aesthetic. These bright nickel eyelets here really do say business. Like it's not, it makes it very hard to dress up these sorts of boots. It really keeps them pretty firmly in the casual category, despite their sort of more refined kind of silhouette. In addition to these elements that make the boot a bit less refined is of course the zipper around the back, which is fixed by a clasp at the top like that, which does make it easy to get in and out of, but again, it makes the boot a bit more serious. Also, a thing that really is worth pointing out here, and one thing that really does draw the eye, especially if you're someone who owns a lot of boots, is the fact that the stitching going along the vamp here, it doesn't go down to the uh, welt like most boots do. Instead, it sort of goes around the laces and back around like that. But this is actually reminiscent of like the English paddock style boot. And it's also something you'll often find on cowboy boots as well. So this is what Ariat means when talking about this boot while being very modern and being more urban friendly is a sort of boot that is still reminiscent and it still holds true to its roots in equestrian footwear. But of course, most people when they see you wearing these boots, they're just going to see black. They're not gonna notice this unusual method of stitching. But it is one of those interesting things that reminds you what is in the DNA of 224. So this leather is about 1.5 millimeters thick, which is relatively thin for boots like this actually. Normally it's like 2.2 2 millimeters, but anyway, this is Chrome XL. It's Chrome XL, that's a very famous combination tanned leather from Halloween Leather Company in Chicago. It's just kind of widely seen as the default leather for nice American boots. It's full grain leather. It was first made back in 1913. It has a long history in the US Army actually. It was used on engine seals and tanks during World War II. Back then it had more controversial ingredients like whale oil, but now it has ingredients like food grade beef tallow, cosmetic grade beeswax. And these ingredients are imbued in the leather with a process called hot stuffing. And all these oils and waxes are responsible for the leather's famous luster. Now this is actually my first pair of black Chrome XL boots, if you can believe it. You normally see this leather in brown because when it's brown, like with these Viberg Service boots, you really notice like the nice depth of color of brown Chrome XL. You don't really get that quite so much with a uh, black Chrome XL. But the good news is that brown Chrome XL is really prone to getting scratched pretty easily. Whereas these black ones, they haven't really shown any signs of scratching at all. And I've been wearing these for a good few weeks. Another downside though of Chrome XL is that it's known for creasing pretty easily. With really expensive Chrome XL boots, like those Viberg ones, 
they often don't because their leather selection is really top notch. That's why they cost 700 bucks. But for most Chrome XL boots, which don't cost 700 bucks, yeah, you're gonna get some creasing. As you can see here on this boot around the, the toe break here. It's not a huge deal. It's just something you should expect if you're getting Chrome XL boots. Now after taking care of this leather, the first thing you're gonna do is get a horsehair brush and give it a good brush down, ideally every time you wear the boots, but definitely before you clean or condition the boots. So that's really important to get that dust off of there. So it goes like the really fine hairs of horsehair help to penetrate the pores of the leather a bit more deeply. So once you've given it a clean down and you might also wanna do like just like a wet rag as well, just to make sure it's nice and clean. You wanna use a conditioning cream and for most people, it's Venetian shoe cream. This is like the go-to shoe conditioner for keeping like leather supple. It's what everyone pretty much goes to for Chrome XL leather. And that's what the manufacturers of Chrome XL leather also recommend. It's also good in just about basically every type of leather out there. It's not the best in the world at waterproofing, but at conditioning and improving the suppleness and improving the longevity and helping to get like a nice patina in the leather. All the stuff in each shoe cream is really top notch. And it's not that expensive either. It's about $3 an ounce. So all you do is you do a thin layer of that over the leather and then you might want to uh, give it another brush down with the horsehair brush to help to cement the, uh, the cream into the leather. Cementing is a term that some people use. And it also helps to uh, heat it up a little bit so that it penetrates a bit more deeply as well because Venetian shoe cream is a blend of many different types of waxes. Like one is for softening, one's for conditioning, one's for restoring and so on. And that's uh, basically it. So you use Venetian shoe cream, give it a brush down and then like wait like a day or two before you start wearing them and then you're good to go. And how often you have to condition them kind of depends on how hard you wear them. But basically when the shoes start to lose their luster and the leather looks a bit dry, that's when you want to go to your tin of Venetian shoe cream. So this outsole, uh, it's got plenty of mud in it as you can see, but this outsole is a combination of leather and Vibram. So you have the Vibram rubber on the forefoot and the back of the heel, it's called the top lift, with a uh, leather on the rest of the heel and the midfoot as well. The heel is stacked leather as well. And that the Vibram is not on the midfoot means the shoe is a bit more flexible than a lot of other shoes that have straight rubber all the way down the foot. And after that, you get a layer of cork inside the cavity created by the Goodyear welted construction. The welt is made of leather. There's a steel shank and there's a four millimeter pour on insole with a leather covering. And it's worth emphasizing, the pour on is meant to help with uh, shock absorption. It doesn't do a great job at it as I'm about to tell you in the next section. But a big thing about this is that it has a Goodyear welt, which means that it's easy to resole these boots when the time comes, which means that the boots can last a lot longer than many of your cemented sole boots out there. So as the fit and the comfort, right now the sizes go from seven to 13 and they start doing half sizes after 11.5. And I am 11.5 and the shoes fit true to size by the way, so you don't have to size down like you do with most boot companies like Red Wing and Wolverine and Thursday. I'm an 11.5, that's my true size. Normally in boots, I'm like an 11, in these I am an 11.5. But again, no half sizes after 11.5 and no other widths either. They don't do wide widths or narrow widths. So if you have a really wide foot, you might be out of luck. As to actually breaking them in, what it's like to wear them, again, they are leather lined, which I really like and that really helped. Uh, the leather was definitely stiff, even though it's relatively thin leather for Chrome XL. It was a little bit stiff when I got these, uh, probably because there are so many layers in the sole and everything. And also because I don't believe the leather lining is calf skin or like something really nice and soft. I think it's like just regular steer hide. Uh, but nonetheless, I broke them in. I did not get any blisters or anything like that. I was pretty happy with that. The arch support is not great. Uh, and also the shock absorption is not that great either. Despite the pour on, you can kind of feel the ground underneath you when you're walking around. That's not a huge deal for a lot of people, but this does not have the sort of a really modern like EVA foam uh, footbed, that sort of thing you'll see in a lot of like modern brands. Uh, again, like Thursday and a few other ones. So more of a traditional feel to the boot, I guess is what I'm trying to say there. Uh, and also the fit is a little bit unusual. It is like nice and uh, it's not super tapered, but I would consider this again, a relatively sleek sort of toe but it's pretty roomy around the heels and a little bit tight at the toes. Now in no way was it like uncomfortable, like this is definitely not a disqualifying thing, but definitely as I was walking around these, especially when I'm wearing thicker socks, I can tell, yeah, it's a tiny bit of heel slippage in the back, even after about three or four weeks of wearing these, which is how long I've worn these, and uh, a little bit of not pinching, but I can feel the sides of the boots at the toe. So yeah, I wouldn't call these boots uncomfortable by any margin, but I would say the arch support, the shock absorption, like the heel fit, uh, it's, it's a B. It's not an A, but uh, it's definitely not a big problem with it. Now, as far as the price goes, uh, a pair of these at the moment, the price can change, but it's about uh, $298. So generally in the world of Goodyear welted boots, uh, that's a reasonable price. Like I think uh, normally boots of this sort of quality are over $300, uh, $320-ish. If it was anything over $350, it would be overpriced. This is just under $300, so it's a, it's a fair price. I'm not gonna say it's a cheap boot, 
But for what you're getting here, uh, with the Goodyear world, all the leather in there, the pour on, the leather lining, the Chrome XL leather, all this sort of stuff, under 300 bucks, it's, it's reasonable. It's not overpriced. All right, so why should you consider getting a pair of these Fairfax boots? Uh, for starters, it's Chrome XL leather, and it really is seen as like the gold standard in leather for American boots. Uh, they did a really good job making sure they got Chrome XL for these boots, especially for boots that they're aiming at more of a slightly more like fashion focused market. But yeah, Chrome XL, it is a very good choice for that. It's really nice quality leather. On top of that, uh, it is leather lined as well. I'm always a really big fan of that. It has a nice shank in there, which many people consider to be the most important part of a boot. Not everyone agrees with that. But yeah, shanks, they help, uh, they help with stability. They help to keep, to keep the boot from losing its shape over time. So all that's pretty important to a lot of folks. And uh, in general, it's, uh, it's very water resistant as well. Again, I believe this is a storm welt. Uh, Goodyear welts are already very water resistant. Uh, this is a 360 degree storm welt, which is like an extra water resistant form of the Goodyear welt. So again, that sort of like harks back to the brand's roots in like the sorts of boots you would wear horse riding or wearing around a farm, that kind of thing. Again, the way they look is, uh, you know, it's not aimed at the sort of boots you wear around a farm, but nonetheless, it retains some of that character. And again, you've got this uh, interesting uh, sort of stitching around here. Yeah, uh, it definitely, uh, again, it harks back to the ethos of the equestrian boot. So it's really nice and interesting and unusual merging of these different aesthetics that you're gonna get from like cowboy boots and more modern, uh, slightly dressier sorts of boots. And finally, this zip at the back, uh, definitely some people have issues with it that I'm gonna get into it, but it does make it very easy to get the boots on and off in a hurry. So for that, I was thankful. Now the thing is when you're reviewing a pair of boots like this, a lot of what some people consider pros are also considered cons by other people. So for one, this uh, sort of you know low cut sock like looking stitching, some people don't like it. I think it's pretty interesting, especially as I learn more about the brand and what they're sort of trying to do to make a modern sort of English paddock shoe, but for a more modern American audience. I think I think it's pretty cool and it's pretty hard to make your product stand out in the market. Uh, but for some people, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit too unusual for them to get into it, that's fine. Same thing goes to the zipper, it is convenient. But uh, a lot of people, they just absolutely hate zipper shoes. And to be completely honest, this is the first pair of shoes with a zipper that I've ever owned. Uh, it's kind of cool, makes it easy to get out of there, but uh, you're still wearing boots with a zipper. Some people just absolutely hate that. The fit was fine. It was not amazing. Uh, again, a little bit loose at the heel. Teeny, 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 tiny bit. I wouldn't say tight, a little restrictive uh, around the toes. Uh, not to an insane degree, but you can feel it there. Uh, and it's also the arch support. There wasn't really much going on there. Shock absorption, not really much going on there. Even though there is porn in there, and even though there is a shank, yeah, these aspects of the fit, uh, it just wasn't the best I've ever had. I don't, again, I don't wanna say it's a deal breaker, but it was more of a B for the comfort than an A. Finally, another thing about the aesthetic is the fact that these are black boots with a, you know kind of bright, shiny silver nickel eyelets. These boots, all things considered, they're pretty serious. But again, that could be a pro depending on what you're after in a pair of boots. All right, those are my thoughts on the Fairfax boot from 224 Ariat. Uh, pretty interesting boot. I think especially if you are a big fan of cowboy boots, or you have a history of like horseback riding or anything like that, I think you're definitely gonna like this way of weaving that culture into more modern everyday city wear. Even if you don't, pretty interesting boot. Very solidly made, uh, very water resistant, um, but does have some idiosyncrasies that you'll have to decide on your own if it's worth it for you. Uh, the full written review, by the way, with a bunch of pictures and everything is in the description below. And make sure you subscribe as well, because I got a whole lot more boot reviews and denim reviews other sorts of men's fashion-y kind of stuff coming up.